if, um, if you have your Bible or an app you'd like to open and be following along with me, I'm going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. So if you want to, if you want to start making your way there, that's where I will be in just a second. <clears throat> so just like last week, we have um, kind of have two things going on this morning in God's Word. Praise the Lord. Uh, the elders have asked me to speak on some matters of the election and kind of all these things that are coming at us this election season. And so last week I addressed the question, what does the Bible say about voting? And this morning I'm now taking on the second question, which is what does the Bible say about ballot measures or, or ballot initiatives? I hope you got a chance to, to, if you weren't here, if you got a chance to see the, the other part online, I'm sure you can find it on the website. What does the Bible say about ballot measures? Well, first, a ballot measure, because I know there's some young people in the room maybe haven't gone to vote yet. A ballot measure is when the government wants to ask for our opinion and our thoughts on how the government should handle a particular uh, legal matter, or even an amendment to the Constitution. It's Nebraska saying, hey, Nebraskans, how should we handle these things? So in other words, the government is asking you what you think about an important topic. With that in mind, let's go ahead and look at 2 Corinthians 5, starting in verse 17. I'm going to read through verse 21. <clears throat> God's Word says, Therefore... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. Therefore... We are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. In, um, in Utah, where I came from, back in 2004, there was a proposed constitutional amendment for the state that wanted to define marriage as being between one man and one woman. And as you can imagine, this was contentious. I mean, this was a big thing that was going on. And if ambassadors are people who represent the king or a nation and they speak on behalf of the king or a nation, then an ambassador for Christ speaks for Christ. And so when the state is asking, what say you, Christian ambassador of Christ, then we must speak what Christ says. That's what we do as ambassadors. And God defines marriage between being between one man and one woman. So if the Bible has something to say about the issue on a ballot measure, we should vote as a way of speaking on behalf of God. Like it's, it's that simple, right? Simple enough. But while representing God in that election was important, and it was, it was only a very, very small part of what God was asking me to do to be an ambassador for Christ on that issue in that place. See, sometime after that election, a prominent gay man in my community who was highly active in the LGBTQ movement and who held a seat on the community council where we lived saw some of the mission work that we were doing in some of the scariest parts of our town, and he wanted to get coffee with me because he wanted to find out why in the world we were risking our lives for whatever it was we were risking our lives for. He was curious. So he knew that I was a Christian pastor. We got coffee. And after we had talked about the street ministry we were doing, he brought up the LGBTQ marriage and lifestyle stuff. And I could have fought and I could have made excuses, which is what he expected me to do. He wanted me to do that, but I didn't. Instead, I served as an ambassador of God. That was the opportunity that was before me. I was fair. I was honest. 
I was calm. And I gave him an opportunity to consider what I was sharing. What I was sharing was not my opinions, but God's word. And then after honestly sharing this thing, I invited him to be reconciled to God. You know what happened? God opened his eyes. And God opened his ears. And God changed his heart. And he was saved. God saved him. He was radically transformed. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic event. One of my greatest memories, one of my favorite memories, his name's Brandon. I actually have a little card in my office because he shares his testimony all the time now. He's a great guy. One of my greatest memories was him coming up out of the baptism tank with his arms raised in total victory, coming out like praising King Jesus. Everybody just cheering for him. It was such an amazing day. Now he still has struggles. He still has temptations, but now he has the Holy Spirit. And now he has a faith family of people around him that are continuing to remind him and draw him back to the gospel. So another time, two married lesbian ladies ended up getting saved through a parachurch ministry. And they tried to go to a church to learn how to follow Jesus to sort of help navigate this whole thing. How do we how do we do this? And the church blasted their lifestyle and chased them out of the building. And I don't know how they had the energy to try going to another church. I really don't because they were treated so terribly. But by the grace of God, they came into the church where my family was and where we pastored. And, and I can tell you, it was not easy for us. It was a little bit of a challenge. But with grace and truth in love, and by the power of the gospel, our church got to serve as ambassadors for Jesus to help them be reconciled to God. A lawyer helped them navigate divorce and all the entanglements they had to work through. I helped them navigate through a lot of complex issues in God's word. They joined Bible studies. The church came around them. They started serving. I can tell you that baptism Sunday was awesome. And today, both of these sisters are on fire for God like few other women that I know. They serve And they proclaim the gospel mostly back into the lifestyle they came out of. We couldn't have reached that, but they reached that. It's amazing, right? Praise the Lord. So it was good and it was right to stand for God on the 2004 ballot initiative, for sure. I don't don't say that we should do anything less, absolutely. But it did not even come close to ending there. Voting was important, but that was a very small part of what God was asking me to do as an ambassador. And so now here I am, here we are again. It's, I'm in Nebraska and there is a ballot issue that we need to look at. It's on the topic of abortion in this state. The state is asking us, how should the people of Nebraska handle and think about abortion? There are two competing initiatives on the ballot this year on the topic of abortion. 434 seeks to protect unborn children from abortions in the second and third trimester, except in the case of medical emergency, sexual assault, or incest. And then 439 seeks to make it a fundamental right to have an abortion until fetal viability without the aid of extraordinary medical measures. Now I've taken these two statements right off the ballot right off this sample ballot. We have a stack of them, although I heard the first service pretty much decimated that table, so I might need to make copies. There should be a stack of sample ballots and a whole bunch of information from the Nebraska Family Alliance out there for you to take a look at. I encourage you to read those. If you want to do that on your phone, you can use the QR code on the back of your bulletin where you can go and get information because as Christians... We need to understand this issue, but there are a lot of people that are misrepresenting what's on these ballots, and they're twisting it up, and they're making it very complicated. Christians need to be honest, and we need to represent these things right, correctly, and we need to understand them. If we're going to be ambassadors for Jesus in the, at the polls, we need to understand what it is we're dealing with. So I encourage you to visit the table or visit the QR code so you can be well-informed at least as far as that goes. But we need to remember that God has some things to say about abortion too. 
I think we all know this. We know this. God is the giver and the creator of life. And his creation bears his image. God has a lot to say about murder and taking life. And we should not be so quick to unknit what God has knit together in the womb. God has much to say about our sexual behavior and our sexual relationships. He speaks to seeking God and his wisdom in all of our choices. He talks about fleeing our temptations. He calls us not to murder the consequences of our sin, but to mortify our sin itself by the power of Christ's work on the cross. He speaks about taking care of orphans and seeking protection and justice for those who can't seek it for themselves. Certainly there's a lot to prayerfully consider from God's word on this topic as we serve as ambassadors. And that's what the text said. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Christ reconciled you to himself and gave you the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, you are an ambassador for Christ. God making his appeal through you. So church, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to speak for God in this upcoming election, and we should. Absolutely, we should. But that's only one important step as our service as ambassadors. Because after they count all the votes, and after all the court cases are done, and then after all the appeals are done, we're still going to be dealing with this stuff. If not in our state, certainly in our nation. So church, our job is not over, not even close. Women who've had abortions may come here as visitors. Some might be in here right now. Doctors who've administered abortions might come here as visitors. Some might be in here right now. Men and women who've engaged in sexual activities outside of God's instruction, but by the grace of God were spared from an unwanted pregnancy, might come in here as visitors, and some are in here right now. There are people in our community who are thinking about getting an abortion here or traveling somewhere else. There are people in our community who have had an abortion and they're trying to make sense of it all, they're trying to work it out. There are young people who are coming in here, filling our classrooms downstairs or sitting in the student section that will be faced with these kinds of issues in the future that need to understand what God has to say about these things. They're working it out right now. All of this and so much more, it's here right now. We're working through this right now. What do all these people need? What do we need? Every single one of us. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need our hearts to be transformed by the power of this gospel. And when God transforms our hearts, changes the way we see things and understand things by reconciling them to himself, he also gives us a ministry of reconciliation into this broken world. So Trinity Church, we have an important opportunity to represent Jesus on November 5th. And I want to encourage you certainly should do that, please. But also, let us not miss the opportunity that goes so much further beyond November 5th as that's only the first step. So may we be a church that is serious about the ministry of the gospel in the polling places and well beyond. Let's pray. Lord, you have asked us, the state of Nebraska has asked us what we say about abortion. May we be people who say what you say. Lord, and all the other issues that are on the ballot, may we be people who say what you say. May we be ambassadors for you. And Lord, I know this is a complex issue that we will be dealing with for many, many, many years many more years to come. May we be people who represent your gospel. May we be people who are gracious to walk with those who have, have 
somehow been involved in all of this. May we point people to you and see reconciliation because you went to the cross, paid the ultimate price for sin. May we be your representatives in this dark, broken world. And Lord, please protect the unborn in this state, in our country, Lord, in the world. In Jesus' name, amen.